Welcome to Hoobie's Garage, the dumbest automotive channel in all of YouTube, except I don't feel very dumb today because my latest purchase is absolutely brilliant. Behold, a 1991 Chevy Van G20 conversion, and it is absolutely amazing. Now, while this is a 1991, it's kind of the last of the breed, the G20 came to life in conversion form really in the 70s and 80s when it was in its prime. And if you were looking for the ultimate luxury vehicle in the 80s, you bought one of these. You knew your parents were cool in the 80s if they owned a giant conversion van. And I was very fortunate to grow up with my parents owning basically exactly this. My mom had a red 1984 Chevrolet Corvette and when she was pregnant with me, they traded it in for something just like this. And this is basically what I grew up in for the first, well, five years or so of my life. Some of my earliest memories are in vans like these, and it had been, well, that long since I experienced a van just like this. I'd owned a few conversion vans during my dealer days, but none with the fuel-injected Chevy 350 in this beautiful conversion van form. And really, there is nothing close to this made today, luxury-wise, that comes even close to this G20 van. It is absolutely spectacular. Now, finding one that is as nice as this is very, very hard, and I had no idea how hard it was going to be to find one until this one popped up in Dallas. It was an eBay auction, no reserve, uh, but I asked him, well, what would you sell it now for? Because I didn't want to get into a bidding war because everybody's crazy right now spending so much money for cars. He gave me a price, $9,000, which may seem like a lot, but go find a van like this with less than 100,000 miles and in this condition you really can't find it. People want 15, 20, 25,000 dollars for vans just like these, which may seem absolutely crazy until you experience one for yourself. And that's what I'm going to try to do today, show you how incredible this van is. There's nothing like it. Now I'm used to driving cars that get quite a bit of attention, but I was really surprised how many people look at this thing and see it not in fear, but look at it and say, oh cool, an old conversion van. People have come up and talked to me, which is weird because I'm driving a creepy old van, and tell me stories about how their parents or grandparents had one just like it. My friends too have told me a lot of fond memories of riding these vans, and it's something that you really can't buy anymore. Sure, there are conversion companies selling conversion vans right now, but they're kind of glorified limousines and they're not as comfortable. It, it's just, it's just not the same. First of all, nobody's gonna pay a hundred grand for these things, which is what they go for now, especially when you can buy an Escalade for 70 or $80,000, but back in the 1980s, you couldn't buy a Cadillac Escalade. The SUVs, really, luxury SUVs, were in their early form and not really well thought out yet. But these conversion vans, I'm not kidding, they are the most luxurious vehicles that you could buy in the 1980s. And they weren't, they weren't that much money. They were kind of expensive, but not super, super expensive. So let's start with the outside. There were a lot of conversion companies. Some of them are still in existence, but a lot of them are gone. A lot of different companies. This one happens to be a monogram. And one of the calling cards of a vintage conversion van is the custom paint, which this one has a very lovely pattern along with these mag alloy wheels that look like it belongs on a dragster. Really meaty looking, but also look at this kind of this kind of ground effect side spoiler that also doubles as a step for the van. And also this one is the high top, which gives you more room on the inside, but also it gives you a ladder for whatever reason, you can climb up this thing and climb to the top of your van, which I definitely did when I was a kid at the drive-in movie theater. And also a special touch with this van with the spare tire is this lovely beach motif. This used to be a really common thing where you'd have somebody airbrush your spare tire cover. You don't really see it that much anymore. Also the tow hitch cover, you can tow with this thing. So pretty dang cool on the outside, but it's the inside where things really, really get crazy. First of all, it seems like conversion van companies got their seats out of the Lazy Boy catalog. They are ridiculously comfortable. They are the most comfortable seats I, I have ever sat in in a car. And I know I say that a lot, but this definitely tops it. And inside this van also has real oak wood, very thick oak wood paneling. Nothing fake here. And they even decided to put in this uh, massive cabinet here to hold even more stuff, which is hilarious. And also this radio. I have very fond memories of this Delco stereo specifically because when I was a kid, I didn't understand the difference between a tape and the radio live. So when we were driving home one day, I'm probably four or five years old, I'm hearing achy breaky heart on the radio, which I knew the words to, and I wanted my dad to rewind it so I could sing the entire song from the beginning, but he couldn't because it was live radio and I didn't understand what live radio was and it was different from a tape and he just wasn't rewinding it for me. So I started crying because he wouldn't rewind achy breaky heart. It's kind of an embarrassing memory, but this van only has 95 
thousand miles on it and look at these gauges you have front and rear air conditioning up here you have a lot more wood and a cb radio which is still all there but the coolest part of this van has to be this control center right here you have full control of all the accessories in the back of the van some of which are on now you see the tv fog lights mood lighting front and rear fogs all this controlled by this control panel right here as you flip the switches the little leds come on to show you well, all of your accessories are on, which is the coolest thing ever. We'll just do the mood lights for now. Oh yeah. There's also a thermometer here for inside and outside temp. You can toggle back and forth between that. So really, really cool, but uh, gets even better in the back. So if you were a kid in the 80s, you were truly in the lap of luxury back here, starting with the mood lighting, which has little LEDs all over the van, which is just so dang cool. And you could also hide candy and toys in your roll top cabinetry all around the van. I haven't really looked in these yet to see if there's anything hiding, but uh, uh, not really. But definitely the coolest part was the built-in television, which this is the original AudioVox television right here, along with the VCR. And it even still has a cassette in it. It's a, it's a joyful Christmas. Hmm. I haven't been able to get this to fire up yet, so maybe the car wizard needs to look at something. A blown fuse, maybe, but look at this crazy cabinet. I don't think this is original to the conversion van conversion company. I think they added this along with another thing in the back. There's a there's a cooler back here, but you can see what is factory to the conversion are these curtains, which you can draw close if you wanted to sleep in the back of this van. And this seat does fold down into a bed so you could sleep one or two people back here. Also, these seats will swivel all the way around. Kind of hard to do while you're sitting in them, but <laughs> I am rotated totally backwards to where I could have a conversation or a conference with uh, the fine folks right here. And since they're lap-mounted seatbelts, it doesn't really matter which direction you sit in. Well, in the 80s, I, I didn't wear any seatbelts when I was a kid anyway when I was sitting back here. I, I just noticed as I'm sitting, Look at this rack to hang things. You have little notches so they don't move around. So you can even hang your clothes back here. And of course there are little cup holders throughout and ashtrays, which this one wasn't smoked in mercifully. The carpet in this thing, well, it's very, very close to house carpet. It is just absolutely insane. Definitely felt really cool and mom was the one to take all the kids on a field trip or something like that to the pumpkin patch in one of these. And uh, it was very, very sad to see it go. But what I didn't realize is how well these vans drove. My dad would drive us out to Colorado for ski trips two or three times a year. It was like 10 hours or 500 miles, and he always did it in this van. And I thought that was because he wanted to make us comfortable, but really, driving it, it's a very nice experience as well. There is nothing that Bentley or Rolls-Royce made back in the day that could come even close to the luxury of this van. I mean, just recently we we're freaking out about Starlight headliners and all that, but this conversion van in the 80s had a Starlight headliner. It had LEDs in the roof and it, it's, it's beautiful. The golden oak, real oak, and not overly varnished. Another automotive trend recently that people really like, the natural wood in a conversion van. But also driving it, I didn't expect it to drive as well as it does. Unlike a normal SUV where the hood's, well, by five or six feet in front of you and the V8's all right there, parking and maneuvering is really hard, but not with this van because basically the engine is right here. There's a hump, I can remove all this, and you can see basically the back half of the engine. In the front, you open the hood, you can barely see the engine at all. So parking this thing is very easy. It's like driving a short-nosed van. And acceleration-wise, it's a fuel-injected 350, so it's not fast, but it's not slow either. It, it makes great noises too. And then the ride itself is excellent. The rear leaf spring suspension and the normal shocks and springs up front on 14 inch wheels with big, thick rubber tires. Well, this simple setup, which is long gone, provides a ride that you just, you can't get anymore because people want 22 inch wheels on their SUVs. And uh, even with fancy mag ride or air ride systems, it just can't match a thick tire and old school bouncy leaf springs, basically. It's just, it's just amazing. I could see myself pointing this thing west, setting the cruise control, and just not stopping till I reach California. If I wanted to take a nap, I could pull over, pull down the rear seat, and just, uh, well, sleep. I have curtains, I have privacy. So it's kind of like a camper, but it doesn't drive like a camper. That's what's so nice. You could really daily drive this thing and not feel like you're in a giant, massive 
RV. It's, it's, it's really, really nice to drive. I find myself in this thing, well, way too much, and I thought it would scare people, and it does scare a few people. Thinking they're gonna get kidnapped and murdered, and I think the first couple of days of me driving this back and forth in the neighborhood definitely raised a few eyebrows with the HOA Karens and some others. But like I said, a lot of the reaction has been positive. It really is a shame that they don't make a conversion van well, like this anymore. So many are just hopped up really expensive limousines and they're not really affordable to the masses. But people want SUVs now. They don't want full-size land yachts and they don't want giant creepy conversion vans anymore. But they really don't know what they're missing. This thing is so nice. <laughs> See? Break the tires loose. That's nuts. So hopefully you all are just as impressed as me with my latest purchase and it even has priceless artwork that straight pipe fans would love. Kind of needs a topless mermaid on the beach to match uh, Yuri's level of artwork in his Honda. But uh, anyway, I did pay out the nose for this thing to buy the nicest one that I could find within reason. But still, there are plenty of issues. It's making some weird noises and there's some leaks and the little TV VCR thing doesn't work. So the car wizard will have some things to do with it. So we'll check in with him soon and the other hoopties. Thank you for watching. Squint into the sun. Or you can tell my lips, tell my fingertips. They won't be reaching out to you no more. But don't tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart. I just don't think he'd understand. And if you tell my heart, my achy, breaky heart, he might blow up and kill his man. Ooh.